Good afternoon. Welcome back, everyone, to our Thursday Education Summit and our November Summit on how to um, supercharge or, or, you know, introduction to option strategies. And last week, we covered how to supercharge your portfolio utilizing income, which lays the foundations for growing your account sustainably. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to graduate towards trading strategies that you can rely on to help you grow your trading account. And we're specifically going to focus on one very important option strategy. I would argue this is the one strategy that whether you are a beginner or an, or an experienced options trader, it should belong in your toolbox because it should form the foundation of how you can utilize options to grow your account sustainably in the long run. This is the one strategy that I advocate if you're a beginner to learn how to master first and have in your toolbox because it is an incredibly versatile strategy. It's a strategy that you can use in many, many different market conditions. Um, whether you're bullish or bearish, and be able to utilize it to help you grow your account uh, through different market swings and different regimes of markets, whether you have a bullish or bearish view. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, and as a reminder, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, here at Options Play, we dedicate every single Thursday to Options Play education. This is really where we focus on making sure that you have the educational um, uh, content to help you sustainably and confidently grow your account in the long run. We commit to doing these events every single Thursday to help round out your education, not only in some of the technical aspects of trading, whether that's in technical analysis, option strategies like we're going to cover today, but also things like psychology and mindset. We really try to cover all of these topics, everything that we feel you need in order to confidently and sustainably grow your account over the long run. And like I said today, what we're going to do is focus on one strategy that whether you're a beginner or an experienced options trader is the one strategy that I believe everyone has to master if you want to have the foundations to grow your account utilizing options. So what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific securities that I'll be using as example purposes during today's session. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about what does it take to actually grow your account sustainably in the long run utilizing options? Then we'll talk about a simple and forgiving option strategy. And we'll talk about why I think it's a simple strategy for everyone to be able to learn and why it's forgiving, which is why it suits even for someone who's just starting out with options and getting started. Um, we're going to go through a live trading example because that's always the best way to learn uh, a specific strategy. And then more importantly uh, than, than the strategy itself is understanding how to find an edge using the strategy, meaning how can you apply the strategy and consistently grow your account in the long run? So we'll talk about what an edge is and how you can accomplish uh, finding that edge. Then I'm gonna show you how Options Play helps you find these real-time trading signals that provide you with that edge. And then we're gonna go through some examples before I open this up for Q&A. Um, now, I won't have too much time for Q&A here for today because I unfortunately have to attend a family member's funeral. However, I will try to be as comprehensive as possible during today's session so that I can make sure that you are you leave this session with everything that you need to know with regards to this one strategy for helping you grow your trading account. But the primary thing that I want you to be able to walk away from today's session is a clear understanding as to how can I generate consistent income in any market using credit spreads. That's the strategy that we're going to learn during today's session. Now, for those of you that are joining us for the first time here at Options Play, please feel free to chime into the chat window, say hi, say, uh, tell us where you're from, and hopefully we'll be able to um, help you uh, on your journey with regards to options trading. And especially if you're here for the first time, if you want to get, if you want access to today's recording and slides, as well as the tools that I'll be showing you during today's session, you can sign up for a free 30 day trial at the link that we are posting into the chat window here with us. 
or you can point your phone you know, at the QR code here and sign up for that free 30-day trial. That's going to help you get started with everything that we are going to show you here today, as well as give you access to the recording and the slides. I do find that this particular session, the recording and slides are incredibly helpful because it is a self, it is an all-encompassing single webinar that encompasses this one strategy. I really break down from start to finish what you need for this strategy, when do you deploy it, what are the specific criteria to deploy, and why it gives you an edge. Now, this is your first time trading opt-ins or you're just getting started, you might take some time to absorb all that information. So getting the slides and the recording are incredibly important. You can get it for free if you sign up for that free 30-day trial using that link uh, that we just posted into the chat window or uh, pointing your phone to that QR code on your screen, okay? So let's talk about and kick off by talking about growing an options account, because this is really why most of you are here. And maybe um, if any, if you can chime into the chat window, how many of you feel confident in your ability to consistently grow your account? Type yes if you are and type no if you are not into the chat window. Yes, if you are confident in your ability to grow your account sustainably or no, if you do not feel you're there yet. And and typically what I see is major is more no's than yeses when it comes to um uh you know people feeling confident, right? And that's my goal is to make sure that we can move you in the direction of feeling more confident. So let's talk a little bit about what it takes to actually grow your account. First and foremost is having confidence in your strategy. And this comes down to fundamentally understanding the strategy that you're trading and why it works and why you're trading it. And unfortunately, when you simply copy what someone else is doing, so meaning if someone else says, I'm successful at trading, I'm profitable at trading, here's my strategy, and you just follow that strategy. Unfortunately, following doesn't mean that you understand why it works. And, it's, and it also has the effect where when a strategy go th goes through a string of losers and every single strategy in some way, shape or form at some point will go through a string of losers, what you tend to do as a follower is you lose confidence in that strategy because you don't really understand why it works, how it works, why it gives you an edge. So you have you don't have the confidence to follow through with that strategy. And if any of you can relate to that, where perhaps you subscribe to a subscription service, you thought this person was going to help you become a profitable trader. It goes through a string of losses. And what do you do? You say, this is not for me. You cancel that service. Perhaps you go to another service and someone else claims that they have a higher win ratio or more profitability and you sign up for that. And guess what? The same cycle repeats itself and you go from one service to the next service to the next service. And I know many of you here can relate to that. If you do, please type one into the chat window. Uh, if that makes sense to you. So what I'm here to do is to not tell you, here's the system that, that worked for me, just follow me. What I'm trying to do is make sure you understand, here's how you can gain an edge in the trade in the in, in the markets, use trading options, and here's why it works. Okay. It's important for you to understand why before you follow a specific trading strategy. And that's what I'm going to try to lay out during today's session. The second thing you want to do is gain consistency. And this comes from my perspective, um, a couple of different things. While it's not it's not a requirement to be profitable, um, I'm sorry, it's not a requirement to win more than 50% of your trades in order to be profitable. It tends to help from an emotional perspective. So I will admit my own trading, I'm probably not winning more than 50% of my trades, but I'm profitable because my winners are far, far larger than my losers. But that's my process. Not everyone necessarily follows that same process. And I think that that's a process that you can only get to a point where you have a lot more experience trading. If you're starting out and you're not profitable yet, it helps to win more than 50% of your trades. Because when you win more than 50% of your trades, even if your winners are smaller than your losers, what it gives you is the confidence to continue and want to uh, want to continue to um improve and optimize and get better at something because you're already winning more than 50%. So there's a mental component to being uh, to winning more often than not, even if your winners are coming in smaller than your losers, okay? So 
The strategy that I'm going to teach you here today will naturally win more than 50% of the trades that you place. And that's going to help you get to a point where emotionally you feel that you can commit the time and effort to improve and optimize and get to that point where you're profitable. And the third thing is preventing blowups. Blowups is really the, the thing that a lot of traders go through uh, on their path to profitability. I certainly went through it, and almost every single successful trader uh, out there has gone through it. Um, and there are rules and discipline that you can apply to prevent account blowups and losing faith in your strategy. But you really need to have all three in place in order to grow your options account. And we're going to spend most of our time here today making sure that you fully understand gaining confidence, gaining consistency in a specific strategy, and then we'll point you to some of the education that we have around preventing blow up. So that's what we're going to cover during today's session. So what we're going to start off with is a simple and forgiving strategy. This is a strategy for just about anyone with a basic understanding of markets and a basic understanding of options, you can apply this specific strategy for trading your account and helping you grow your account. Um, because credit spreads is an income generating strategy for a mild directional view on a stock or ETF. What do I mean by a mild directional view? I basically mean if you can look at a chart and you can generally say the trend, the, start, the chart is trending in one direction or another, that is the basis for um, uh, selling a credit spread. That's it. You just need to be able to look at a chart and generally say it's trending in one direction or another. You don't have to have a strong view about that trend. You don't have to believe that the trend is going to make a big move. You know, unlike other strategies like buying calls and buying puts, you need to have the stock make a big move in a short amount of time in order for that those types of strategies to be profitable for you in the long run. With an income generating strategy like a credit spread, that's not necessarily the case. Anytime you have a loose directional view, you can sell a credit spread. So it's a lot easier to find opportunities for credit spreads than there are for long calls, long puts, or even debit spreads. It's also a forgiving strategy with a higher probability of success. Um, which is going to help you build confidence. And it's also a strategy with limited risk and limited reward. What that means is that before you get into every single trade, you know exactly how much money you can lose and how much money you can potentially make. And this means that there's nowhere to hide when you have losses or when you have, uh, when you have um, account blowups because the only thing that you can blame and this is this is the hard truth here. The only person you can blame when you quote unquote lose big on a trade is yourself. And it has nothing to do with the trade itself. It has nothing to do with the idea that was generated. It all has to do how many contracts you chose to trade on a specific trade because you know exactly before you get into a trade how much you can potentially lose. So if you ever find yourself in a position where you lost too much money or if you lost too big on a specific trade, not the idea that was bad. It's not the trade that was bad. It was the number of contracts that you traded that was too much for your account. And there's nowhere to hide from that. And that is the unfortunate hard truth when it comes to blowing up your account is that it's almost never the strategy, the, 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 the trade setup, the idea, the thesis. It was always the number of contracts that you chose to trade on a trade. So that's something that you have to take back and do some introspection on if you have found yourself to consistently blow up your account or find yourself in a position where you feel that you've lost too much money on a specific trade. You have to reevaluate how many contracts you've traded. I'm going to show you some of the tools that we have here at OptumSplay that can help prevent that to some degree. So let's talk a little bit about a, a credit spread example, because that's the best way to learn. So, you know, right now we've just talked about it from a theory. Let's really jump into a live example and show this to you. I'm going to use Abbott Laboratories, and I don't have a view on Lab Abbott Laboratories. I'm just showing this to you as an example. This is not a trade idea. This is not uh, a recommendation. This is simply just for, for an example purpose. Abbott Laboratory has currently been trending lower. It's, it's been a mild trend lower, but it's trending lower. And recently it's been trading against this $98 resistance level multiple times. Um, and maybe the idea is that this just continues in this sideways motion and trends lower. It kind of continues this overall trend and continues back into that 92 and a half support level. That's my thesis. So 
It's not a strong view on Abbott Laboratories. It's just saying the trend that it's currently been in and the fact that it can't get above that $98 level, uh, maybe it just continues kind of that bearish trend to the downside. So here's an opportunity to sell a bearish credit spread. And the details of it at, at this moment are not really that important. We're going to come back to why I've chosen these specific expiration dates and strike prices. But in this particular example, what I've chosen is to go out to the December 29th expiration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the $98 call option. The stock at the time was $98. I'm going to sell an at-the-money call option, which is going to collect $2.84. Now, if I were to just sell a naked call option here, I would collect $2.84, but what I would be taking on in exchange for that amount of income is unlimited risk. Meaning if the stock were to take off, let's say it went up to 105, 110, which is always the possibility, I have unlimited losses to the upside. So I never ever advocate anyone to take a strategy with unlimited risk. So I wouldn't, in this particular case, would say what you can do, and this is the, the, the foundations of a credit spread, is remember the strategy driver of the strategy is you're selling the $98 call option for $2.84. But what we're trying to do is get a risk profile similar to selling that naked call, but doing it so with limited risk. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy a higher price call for a smaller amount of money instead of collecting $2.84 for the $98 call and paying in this particular case roughly $0.77 cents for that 103 call. And I'm going to come back to why I've chose December 29th, the 98 strike and the 103 strike. We're going to come back to that later. But because I'm paid $0.77 cents for uh, the uh, 103 call, my net credit on the trade is reduced down to $2.07. So basically, instead of collecting $2.84, I'm only going to collect $2.07. So I'm reducing my overall potential reward in this particular case by $0.77 cents per share, but I'm able to do this now with limited risk. So what I'm max reward is going to be the $207 or $2.07 that I've collected times 100 shares. And what's important to remember here is that the distance between the two strike prices, the $98 and the $103, the distance between these two strike prices in this particular case is $5. What I have to subtract is the $2.07 from that $5 to get my maximum risk. So whenever you're trading a vertical spread, the distance between the two strike prices, that's what's at play. Whatever you can potentially make in this particular case, $2.07, the rest of that $5, $2.93, is going to be my maximum risk. So whatever I, I can make, the rest of it is going to be my maximum risk. And this is an important concept to remember and come back to because this is the foundations of helping you understand how credit spreads can be or how you can find the best yielding credit spreads or the credit spreads that give you the most amount of edge is understanding this concept. It's not a difficult concept. It's just the distance between the two strike prices, what you can make, the rest of it is going to be your risk. So if I can make $2.07 on this $5 wide credit spread, my risk is going to be $2.93. And my break even price is going to be the $98 plus the $2.07, because that's my buffer, if you will, for selling the credit spread. And that gives me a break-even price, whoops, that gives me a break-even price of $100.07. What that means is that I believe the stock is going to decline, but as long as the stock stays below $100.07, I'm still going to be profitable in this trade. So this is the trade where I have a view, but I have a nice buffer so that even if that view doesn't quite work out, I can still be profitable. And that's the forgiving nature of this specific strategy. So three important numbers to remember, how much money you can potentially make, how much you can potentially lose, and your break even price. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into, uh, please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Okay, and we're going to walk you through this example of Abbott Laboratories, I think is going to move lower, but what happens if it moves lower, what happens sideways, what happens if it moves higher, how does it, how does this strategy, this credit spread that I'm selling, how does it perform? So let's look at the first scenario. Let's say everything goes exactly the way I, I planned and the way I want it to go, and the stock stays, uh, moves lower. Well, this is really where you make the full profit. 
to $207 worth of profit if the trade goes in the direction that you expect it to. $207 per contract, just to be clear. Now, what's really interesting, and this is starting to get into the forgiving nature of the strategy, is that not only do you make $207 if the strategy goes or if the stock goes in the direction that you expect it to, but even if the stock doesn't move at all, even if the stock just stays at $98, you still make the $207. That's one of the cool things about this type of strategy. That's what I mean about having a very loose directional view. You don't have to have a strong directional view and say, I think this stock is going to be below 90 in the next two months. If it just stays where it is, you'll be profitable. And not only will you be profitable, you're going to make the full max profit on the trade. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Um, someone's asking about the break even again. We're going to come back to that. Um, so the trade goes in your favor, or if it stays where it is, you make the full profit. Now, let's say the stock doesn't go in the direction you expect it to. It starts to move a little bit higher. Remember, we said the break-even price was $100.07, which is right here on this chart, right? So we think it's going to move lower, but let's say the stock starts to drift a little bit higher. But as long as it stays below $100.07, you still make a profit. That's the true forgiving nature of option selling, right? As an option seller, you can be right, as long as you're right on the directional view, you're going to make money. But even if you are wrong on the directional view, you have a buffer. The buffer is determined by how much credit you receive on this specific trade. I'm receiving $2.07. That's going to be my buffer. So as long as it's, as as it's $2.07 below the $98 strike price, then I'm going to be profitable. So as long as the stock ends up somewhere between $98 and $100.07, I'm still going to be profitable. I'm just not going to be as profitable as if the stock was below $98. Does that make sense to everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. So, and someone asked about buying spreads. No, buying spreads, you don't have the same forgiving nature. Whenever you're an options buyer, you have to overcome the, the, the buffer that you've paid, right? Because you're a payer. If you're paying for options, you have to overcome that move in order for you to be profitable. As an option seller, you get paid, so that becomes your buffer, okay? Now, in the next scenario, let's say the stock does start to move higher. It moves above $100.07. But let's say it stays below $103, which is the upper strike price that you've sold. Here, what you're going to do is you're going to start to see some losses in this specific trade. And I'm sorry, this is actually a typo. This should be $293. You're going to lose some money between zero and $293, which is your maximum loss. And in the last scenario, if the stock moves above $103, no matter how far it moves above $103, the most you can lose is $293. And that's a maximum loss. So as long as the stock ends up above $103 by the expiration date, you're going to lose the full maximum loss. But even if the stock's at $200, you're still only in this particular case going to lose $293 per contract, which is why, again, the only person, unfortunately, that you can blame when you, quote unquote, lose too big or have too big of a loss is yourself because you know exactly how much money you can potentially lose on one contract. It's only you that has control over how many contracts you trade. So you should be in a position to control how much you lose. So even if the trade goes in the exact opposite direction that you expect it to, you should have an outcome where even if you lose the full maximum loss, you can say, that's okay. I've, I've, I'm okay losing that amount of capital, and I will have enough capital to trade tomorrow and continue trading. If that's not the scenario, then you need to be reducing the number of contracts that you are trading. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Uh, technically, yes, you can buy an in the money spread where the theta is working in your favor, but it's still going, the buffer is going to be pretty small. It's, and virtually, it's going to be zero, right? So you're not really going to get much buffer in terms of in the money spreads. Technically, you're right, but you have a very different outcome in this particular case. Um, and yes, time decay works when you're selling options and against you when you're buying options. Um, I think that's what you meant to say in that. Okay, so let's now go. Now that we've covered kind of what the what the 
uh, characteristics are for credit spread, and we've gone through an example. Let's now talk a little bit about mechanics, and this is part of understanding the strategy, or rather understanding the edge that you can get from this specific strategy. So in this example, I've gone out 45 days to expiration. So I'm using this Abbott Laboratory scenario. You might have a different stock that you have a directional view on, and you want to sell a credit spread. So let's talk a little bit about what are the optimal credit spreads. And how can you find an edge? So the optimal credit spread, based on a lot of back testing and research, is to go out roughly 45 days from expiration. This is really where you're going to be able to maximize time decay, but minimize gamma risk. As an option seller, you have two primary things that you're concerned about. You have time decay, which is working in your favor, and then you have gamma or delta risk that's working against you if the stock moves in the opposite direction that you expect it to. So what you want to do is you want to maximize time decay, but minimize gamma and delta risk. So the sweet spot at which you're going to be able to do that is between roughly 45 days and about 14 to 21 days. So if you hold an option expiration between 45 days down to that 14 to 21 days, that's really where you're going to have maximum theta while minimizing kind of your, your delta and gamma risk on that specific trade. So that's why we typically go out about 45 days to expiration. And then what we typically do is we want to sell an at the money call or a put and that depends on whether you're bullish or bearish. You're going to sell puts if you're bullish. You're going to sell calls if you're bearish. So what we're doing is we're selling in this particular case an at-the-money call, which for Abbott Laboratories, when I was trading at $98, was going to be the $98 put. And how I chose the 103 put is we always use a 25 delta call or put. So if you sold it, uh, an at-the-money call, you want to buy a 25 delta call option. What that means is that it's a call option that has a 25% chance that the stock will be above that price at expiration. And I'll show you how the options play tool helps you select based on deltas, but you always want to use a probability-based approach to selecting your strike prices. That's how you're going to achieve more consistency um, in, in your trading accounts. If you're using percentages, that's always going to be inconsistent because when things are more volatile, percentages will have to be uh, adjusted, right? And it's hard to adjust percentages based on volatility versus probability is already adjusted for changes in volatility. So that's why we always use a delta-based approach to select strike prices for all strategies. So when you sell an at the money call option and then buy a 25 delta call or put against it, you're going to collect, you want to collect at least one third of the vertical width or 33% of the vertical width. So what that means is that if you follow these rules, if you follow the expiration rule, if you follow the strike prices rule, and you find that the credit spread that you found on the stock that you want to sell the credit spread on is collecting less than one third of the vertical width, then that is not a credit spread that you should trade. So the minimum uh, width that you want to accept for a credit spread is one third of the vertical width. So here, I have a $5 wide debit uh, credit spread, right? So 98 uh, by 103. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna cover this on the next slide. Um, the minimum width that you want to accept is going to be 33% uh, of the vertical width. So in this example, if I were to sell, whoops, it should say 98. If I were to sell the $98 call option and buy the 103 call option, this is the width of $5, as we said. The minimum amount of credit that I want to receive on this is going to be $1.66 because of that concept we talked about at the very beginning. What I can potentially make, the rest of it is going to be my risk. So, if I'm collecting $1.66 on a $5 wide credit spread, I'm going to be risking $3.34. That comes out to be a risk to reward ratio of roughly two to one. Okay. That means I need about 67% of my trades in order to be winners. I, I need 67% of my trades to win in order for me to break even on the trade. So if I have two winning trades where I win a dollar, one losing trade where I lose $2. Two winning trades where I win a dollar, two losing one losing trade where I lose two dollars, and I repeat the cycle over and over again. What do I get at the end of that? Type your answers in the chat window. What do I get at the end of this cycle where I win two dollars at a time, lose two dollars, win two dollars at a time, lose two dollars? 
Penn jumped in first. He said zero, big fat zero. Uh, not a blown account. You get a zero. You get you get a break even, right? And a lot of people will ask me why the hell would I trade a strategy where I'm just at break even? Well, my answer to 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 everyone that that asked that question is that most traders, as many of you said at the very beginning, are not even at break even. You're not growing your account sustainably. What I'm trying to show you is what is the bare minimum you need to accept in order to sell a credit spread. Meaning, do not accept credit spreads that are any worse in, in, in risk to reward than two to one. You, the minimum that you want to accept is one third of the vertical width, which is why you never want to sell a credit spread. If you sell, if you set up this credit spread and you see it only collects a dollar fifty, that's one that you should run away from because that's a risk to reward worse than two to one. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. This is the absolute bare minimum that you need to accept because this is what will at the very bare minimum get you to break even, okay? So that is the bare minimum. Notice in the example that I showed you, in when I sold the $98 call and I bought the 103 call, I didn't collect $1.66, I collected $2.07, which means that because I collected more in premium, I risked less. So now instead of risking instead of risking three dollars and thirty four cents, I'm only risking two dollars and ninety three cents. This gives me a risk to reward ratio that's much closer to about one and a half to one. And now I only need sixty percent of my trades in order to to break even. So if I have two winning trades where I win a dollar, one losing trade where I lose a dollar fifty, two winning trades where I win a dollar, one losing trade where I lose a dollar fifty, and I do this over and over again, now I start to be profitable. And now I can start growing my account. So what you need to do when you're selling credit spreads is you actually want to be selling, looking for credit spreads where you collect as large of a percentage of the vertical spread as possible, because that's how you gain an edge from the strategy. And that's how you gain uh, the ability to grow your account in the long run. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And I'm going to come back to well, how do you actually find this, right? But the first part is understanding how do you get an edge from the options component of the trade? There's also an equity component to this, right? Because you're selling options on a specific stock. So we also have to talk a little bit about timing because timing is an important component to being profitable or rather how profitable on this specific strategy. Here's a chart of a stock. This was XLC, the communications ETF. And throughout 2020, 2021, this was an ETF that continued to move up to the right in a straight line, meaning it's very easy for anyone with a basic reading of a chart to say a stock or an ETF is trending higher or trending lower, which means that pretty much throughout this nearly one year move here to the upside, you could have sold the credit spread in just about any single day in this year period, and you likely would have been profitable on a, on a bullish credit spread on communications. That's what I mean about a simple, forgiving strategy that you can use in just about any market condition. However, just because you could have made money on this strategy at any time out during the year doesn't mean that you would have made the most amount of money at any time during the year. Meaning, if let's say you traded in this uptrend, whoops, Let's say you got into the trade right here, right? You saw that it was in an uptrend, it broke out to a new high, and you said, let me enter a credit spread because it's clearly trending higher. Would you have been profitable in that trade? The, the answer to your question is yes, because as long as the stock kind of stays sideways and continues to drift to higher, you'll be profitable. But you would have had to sat through a little bit of chop Right, you could have you could you would have had to sit through some chop and really had to sit on the trade for nearly three four weeks before you would have gotten to that point where the trade was profitable. And that's time that you could have potentially traded something else that you had to have money committed to this trade in order for it uh, to, in order for it to for this trade to work that you couldn't spend somewhere else. However, if let's say you were a little bit more patient and you saw that it was in an uptrend, but you waited for pullbacks in that uptrend and then entered, well, if you entered the trade here, you would have been profitable in just about three, four, five trading sessions. You could have been out of that trade and placed another trade in something else. So there's really two parts to this specific strategy. There's one component, which is finding option strategies where you collect as close to 
35, 40% of the vertical width, sometimes even a little bit more than 40% of the vertical width. It's very rare that you find anything more than 40% of the vertical width. And then the second part is a timing component, right? Just because something is bullish, like let's say you got into the trade right here. Would you have been profitable? Yes, you still would have been profitable, but you would have had to sit through some pain before it got to the point where you were profitable. If you entered right here, would you have been profitable? The answer is yes, but you would have had to sit through quite a few weeks of pain before it got to that point. And, you, and that's time that you can't take the money that's applied to this trade to something else, which is why when you're trading this type of strategy, you can find an edge in two places, in the option strategy itself and in the equity component. So. And when you see an uptrend, waiting for pullbacks gives you the opportunity to get into a credit spread, whoops, get into a credit spread and potentially be profitable in a very short amount of time, four, five, six trading days and be out of the trade and do the same thing over and over again. So it requires you to be patient, not only from the equity side, as well as the options side. And you can do this for the bullish side, as well as on the bear side. So if you have a bear, if you have a stock that you believe has now trending lower, waiting for rallies gives you the opportunity to potentially be profitable in a short amount of time, rather than if you've got in sort of when things were looking really bad, Yes. Would you have been profitable a few weeks later? The short answer is yes, but you would have had to sit through some pain and potentially could have even gotten stopped out before it turned back into a profitable trade. So there's really two components here that you have to think about in terms of how can you truly maximize this type of strategy. Does that make sense to everyone? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so that begs the question. I found a trade like Abbott Laboratories where the stock was trending lower. It kind of bounced near the top of that resistance level. Uh, you know, it kind of looks something like this, right? It was, a, it was a stock that was trending lower. Whoops. It was a stock that was trending lower and then it was trading range bound. It was trading near the top end of the range. And my view is that maybe if it makes a move like this, I'll be profitable in a short amount of time. And it also happens to be a credit spread where I collected more than 40% of the vertical width. So that begs the question, how can you find trades like that? And this is really where we built a report that does all of these scanning capabilities directly for you and automates every single step that I just talked about. So the first thing, our fully automated credit spread report, which I'm going to show you in one second, what it does is it only finds credit spreads that generate more than 33% of the vertical width. And what you're going to see is that many of them will collect 41, 40% um, of vertical width, and you can sort it based on premium versus width so that you find the ones with the best edge at the very top. The second thing this report does is it only scans for very liquid underlying symbols, which means that you don't have to do all this research and then find out it's a small cap stock where the liquidity on the options are not very strong. You know that if you find a credit spread on one of our reports, you can get filled near the midpoint, if not at the midpoint, on almost every single one of these trade, trade ideas that we, uh, that we send you. And the third thing that we do is we align it to that technical directional view, meaning just because something has a strong a credit is not sufficient enough. We need to have a rally in a bearish trend or a pullback in a bullish trend in order for it to align. And only when all things align do we send you uh, the opportunity within our trade ideas platform. So I'll show that to you here in one second. You can find it on the options play tool under the ideas section. Under the ideas section, we have technical ideas, we have cover call ideas, short put ideas, and you will see your credit spread ideas. And like I said, what it does is it scans the entire market for those three very important criteria because without any one of these three, I would not trade it. So this is designed to help automate how we find opportunities in this market. So if we look at here like XLV, right? Let's take a look at a chart here for XLV and see what it looks like. And then we'll take a look at the credit spread. So XLV, as you can see, is in this downtrend. And what we want to do is we want to find these small rallies in this downtrend because those are the best opportunities to get into a short position and be profitable within just a few trading sessions. And we have a similar setup here, right? It's not a strong rally, but enough to potentially enter a bearish trade. So if this pattern that we see in this chart continues, we can be profitable in a, in a relatively few trading sessions. And that's the goal, right? Is to ultimately no one knows where the markets are going or where a specific stock is going. 
But what we're trying to do is put as many things that skew in our favor as possible, the directional view and the credit. So here, what we're looking at is December 29th, we're selling the at the money uh, call option, the 128 and a half, and we're buying the 131 and a half call option. And just to show you that, the 131 and a half call option, as you can see, is around the 30 deltas. So we're choosing a strike press that's around 25, 30 deltas. And this gives you an opportunity to basically um, choose a strike price that's roughly 25 to 30% chance that the stock will be above that specific price. And what we're collecting here is $1.36 on a, a $3 wide credit spread. So $1.36, let's do some math, divided by $3. And we're collecting 45% of the vertical width here in this particular case. This is an extreme, right? We don't find credit spreads that collect this much uh, width very often. So this one is a pretty good looking credit spread that you can potentially sell. Perhaps by tomorrow market open, this might be 42, 43%, maybe it's not quite 45%, but you're collecting a very good percentage of vertical width and you found a liquid ETF, uh, XLV, obviously a very widely traded ETF, and you found a, uh, you know, an ETF that is trending lower, but had a short-term rally where the trend, uh, where the timing could be uh, quite strong for a bearish exposure. And this is really what that report does, is it does all of that work for you so that you don't have to find these things manually. Um, let's take a look at another opportunity. Let's see if we have some bullish opportunities here. Here's um, Wayfair. Wayfair has been trending lower here, and perhaps now is that opportunity to get long. Wayfair looks like it's severely oversold and potentially has that rally potential here. So let's say we're looking at a bullish opportunity here, selling the 4640 put, collecting $2.37. Let's do some math. $2.37 divided by $6 is 39% of the vertical width. So the idea here is to help provide you with opportunities that are um that meet all of the different uh, uh, criteria that we look for with regards to directional view, as well as the option strategy itself, and make sure that you have everything that you need in order to uh, potentially make a trade without having to do anything more. Here's IBB, the biotech ETF, trending lower here. And as you can see, every single time it kind of gets up to this trend line, it starts to get rejected here to the downside. Is that going to happen? I don't know, but what I'm trying to do is provide me with opportunities that give me as many things that are skewed in my favor as possible. The more things that are skewed in my, my, my favor, the more likely I will be profitable in the long run. And it's all about the long run. And you in and, and trading, you can never think about this trade, that trade. You have to think of it over hundreds of trades, right? And you're trying to make sure that over hundreds of trades, you're profitable. And the only way to do that is if you have tools like this that can help find as many of the opportunities that skew the multiple um, factors that go into profitability in your favor when you open that trade. So this tool tries to automate all of those things for you, and it's built completely into your options play platform. We've now um, integrated the credit spread ideas into the idea section, so you don't even have to go to the, the hub reports in order to find it. It's all automated for you, and you can just simply go through this list and as you can see, it's sorted based on premium versus width. So you can see how much premium you're collecting. And, you know, for me, I don't really like to go down below 37% or so. So basically, once I get down to about 37%, that's really all I'm looking for. You know, maybe lows. Lows, uh, if I'm not mistaken, recently reported earnings. It did report uh, slightly better than expected earnings. But, you know, the trend is still lower here, right? So this could very much continue. Um, and that's really what we're looking for are rallies that can potentially be sold into. So here I'm collecting $3.72 on a $10 wide debit spread, a uh, credit spread, which is a little over 30, 37% of the vertical width. So not every single one of these strategies makes sense for you, but what we're trying to do is find as many of them that you can look through quickly and very quickly within a few seconds, look at opportunity and say, yes, this makes sense to me. This agrees with my overall thesis of the market or this specific stock or sector and be able to quickly make that trade. So you can trade this button, click on the trade button. You can, uh, you can enter it into a test portfolio. And this is something I advocate if you're new to credit spreads, create a test portfolio. Um, uh, paper trade these. You can paper trade these trades into your, into you create a new personal portfolio, create a paper trading portfolio. And what you can do is you can 
paper trade these. Use our portfolio tool to track these paper trades over time, see when you would get out at a profit or a loss, and quickly be able to um, get a good feel for this before you execute this into your brokerage account. And one thing I do want to show you is the risk and investment calculator. This is an incredibly important tool for those of you that have ever been in a point where you say, I've blown up an account. This is a tool that you have to use on every single trade to calculate the number of contracts that you can sell to prevent yourself from blowing up your account. So as you can see, the risk and investment calculator, all I have to do is click on that button once and it calculated for me that I can sell 17 contracts and keep my max risk within the $2,000 limit, which is my limit on this hypothetical portfolio of $100,000. Now you can adjust your portfolio default using this by putting in what your portfolio size is. We recommend that you never risk more than 2% of your total account value on a specific trade. And let me go back to this specific trade. Actually, I think we were looking at a different trade here. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the right one. So if I use the risk and investment calculator, I click on calculate and it'll show me that I can, in this particular case, uh, sell 17 contracts where my max risk is still going to be within the $2,000 risk, which is 2% of my total account value. So if I lose 2%, I still have 98% of my account left, and that's enough for me to continue trading. And this is an incredibly important tool for those of you that are using Options Play to help you stay in your lane and prevent your account blowups. Now, I only have a couple of minutes, but one thing I do want to leave you with is how to manage these trades. This is a question that a lot of questions, a lot of traders have been asking me when I do these sessions. There's really, two, uh, there's really three criteria for you to exit a credit spread. You either hit a stop loss, you either hit a take profit, or you hit a time-based uh, exit rule. Whichever one of these three rules is triggers first, you have to exit the trade, okay? The stop loss rule is first and foremost, if the trade loses 100% of the max gain, right? So in this particular case, I sold a $100 call and I bought the 120 call and I collected $8. The most I can make is $8. So if a credit spread that I've sold loses the maximum gain in this particular $8, then I have to get out. So if I sold something for $8, what I want to do is I want to place my limit order to get out at $16. Rather, my stop loss order to get out at $16. Because if an $8 credit spread is now trading at $16, that means I've lost 100% of what I can potentially make and it's time to get out of that specific trade. So whatever credit that you receive, if you simply double it, that, that amount, that is the price at which you want to set your stop loss order at, okay? The second thing is a limit order. So if I can potentially make $8, what I want to place is my limit order to take profits at half that amount, $4. My maximum gain is about 50% of the maximum gain. That's your take profit trigger. And the third trigger is if you sold something that's 45 days out, and now you're trading near 21 days to expiration, and the stop loss order and the limit order has not triggered yet, it's time to also get out of the trade. And this is because of the early assignment risk that you start to take on as you get early, closer to expiration, the gamma risk that you start to take on as you get closer to expiration, these are things that you want to avoid. You never, generally speaking, when you're selling credit spreads, you don't want to be exercised early. You don't want to be assigned early. You certainly don't want to uh, be in that last couple of days where you have a high amount of gamma risk, where a small a swing, a small swing can turn the profit from, or can turn the trade from a, a profitable trade to a huge loss in a short, in a very small amount of time. Um, those are things that you want to avoid. So those are the three rules for managing a credit spread. So I went over a lot of things here today. I talked about credit spread for those of you that are an introduction to credit spreads for those of you that are brand new. We walked through some examples. We showed you the outcomes. We talked to you about how to generate an edge on the option strategy, how to generate an edge from the equity perspective. We also showed you some tools to help you scan for these capabilities and scan for these ideas. And lastly, we wrap this up for rules for managing this trade. So like I said, we covered a lot of things. I don't rec I don't... And, I don't expect anyone to have remembered everything from this 45 minute session, which is why in my opinion, it's so important for you to get access to the recording. If you have a free trial or if you have a membership, we will be sending you the recording after today's session. But if you don't have a membership or if you don't have a free trial, sign up for that free 
30-day trial so that you get access to today's recording, today's slides, and you get access to the tools that I showed you here today to find these opportunities and calculate the right number of contracts for you to trade before you get into that trade. So you never find yourself in a position where you say, I've lost too much money on a specific trade. And hopefully this puts you onto the path of growing your account more competently and sustainably in the long run. Like I said, I unfortunately do not have time to answer questions during today's session, but I will leave you with today's recording and slides so that you can follow along with us. And um, you can always send us an email at info at optionsplay.com if you have any follow-up questions to today's session. With that, thank you so much. I hope you guys all have a fantastic trading day, and I will see you guys here on Monday for our market outlook session. Thank you so much, and have a great trading day.